Welcome back, Chemistry 30. So we'll look at this part of uh, the notes that we looked at here at the end. So formatting these kind of numbers. Now these aren't dead set numbers. They're kind of um, fringe numbers here that we can kind of use as cutoff points. But again, it's not set in stone. So what you can do, if you have this sheet, maybe write it on this sheet or on the back of it. Or if you don't, I'll maybe just look at just simply writing it on a random sheet and you can just transfer this information over to uh, the other one later. So we're gonna make a little chart here, just uh, summarizing all of this information. So we can write here, um, so we'll make it something like this maybe. And uh, electro negativity difference and then we will write here bond type all right so we said that if the difference in electronegativity is greater than 1.7 it's an ionic bond okay and a, an ionic bond of course deals with a complete transfer of electrons. Just use E minus there for short. And then we have two more scenarios here. So the other one we had, uh, so if we have that, then we have one that if it's less than 0.4, less than 0.4, we were told that it is a non-polar covalent bond. Okay, so a non-polar covalent bond. And of course what that means is equal electron sharing. Okay, so they're shared, the electrons are shared equally. Then we have the scenario if it's greater than or equal to 0.4 and less than or equal to 1.7. Now again, those we're kind of using those as cutoff numbers, but they're not strict. But for our intent and purpose, we can think of them as being a cutoff point. So greater than or equal to 0.4 and less than or equal to 1.7, it is a polar covalent bond. So the electrons are still shared, but they are shared unequally. Unequal electron sharing. So there we go. That's what we could use. You can have that on the sheet and we'll be able to use that uh, for any scenario involving looking at the differences in electronegativity and then trying to figure out what type of bond we are dealing with. So what we'll do is we'll take, we'll take a quick look at the assignment. I'll go through a couple of questions there just to make sure you're on your way with doing that and then you'll be able to finish it. All right, so looking at this, you should be okay with the, the first page is simply going through some trends that we looked at there. And uh, then moving on to the second page, uh, we should be going, it should be okay there too, looking at the most electronegative one. So you can use the chart that's in your notes or of course use this chart. And same thing here. And then down here, indicate the positive and negative ends of each of the following bonds. Determine the difference in electronegative excuse me, electronegativity as well. So let's take a look at, we'll do one of these maybe. So if we look at sulfur and oxygen. So uh, sulfur has an electronegativity number of 2.58 and oxygen is 3.44. Okay. So if I look at that, take the larger number, subtract the smaller number. Oh, it's been a while since you've done this, I bet. Six, five, six, seven, eight. Point eight six is the difference in electronegativity. So of course, if I was to look at our scale, of course we know that's going to be, it's less than 1.7, so it's polar. And it's greater than 0.4, so it's going to be a polar covalent bond, so unequal sharing. So we could mention that even though the question didn't ask that, polar covalent 
bond. So in our case there, the oxygen is larger, so we'll make that little delta symbol negative and the little delta symbol on the S positive, showing that there's a pull towards the oxygen side with that particular one. So that's how you do that. And then uh, looking at number, so that, that one extends onto the next page, looking at number six, with only a periodic table, use electronegativity trend to circle the more uh, electronegative, the more polar bond. And of course you notice here that in each one of these there is a common element. So you can do this question if there is a common element, so HH, BRBR, etc. It's like it's C just for kicks. SO and SBR. SO or maybe let's look at another one here. Let's look at um, I don't know, let's look at one that's going to be quite obvious here. Um, I will do that one. Why not? So we would do SO and SBR. So SO, SBR. So SO versus SBR. Now this is kind of a tricky one because they're fairly close to each other, aren't they? Fairly close. So if we look at SO, now we also have the fluorine. The ones that are beside fluorine tend to be the uh, more electronegativity one, or electronegative one. So actually in this case, the SO is going to be the more electronegative one. So if you look here, 3.44 minus 2.58 is very close to 0 0.9, whereas here, 2.96 and 2.58 is going to be less than, it's around 0.4-ish. So this is going to be the more electronegative one. So that one's kind of a difficult one to just simply use an electronegativity table for. Uh, but if we look one at one that's more obvious, um, such as the last one here, uh, PBR and SBR. So PBR or SBR. You can see that P is going to be further away from BR, so it's going to be the more electronegative one. And you, Oh yes, and I'm using the electronegativity table so you can really see that. The difference between these two numbers is relatively small compared to the difference between these two numbers. So PBR will be the more electronegative one. All right. Let's look at one more question. I'm going to look at the last one here. In the following pairs of binary compounds determine which one, let's start this too, is the molecular substance and which one is the ionic substance. So which one of these involves a transfer of electrons? So that's going to be ionic. And which one's going to be a molecular substance? I guess it helps if you can see what I'm writing. So ionic bond or a covalent bond. That's really what we're seeing here. In which there's electron sharing or is it electron transfer? And of course we know by looking at this. If the difference in electronegativity is greater than that, ionic. If it's less than 1.7, it's covalent. So that's what we have to do here. So we're going to look at a titanium chlorine bond and a calcium fluorine bond. So we're going to look at the differences between those. So I know this titanium is attached to fluorochlorines, but let's just look at one of the bonds and one of the bonds. Okay, so first of all, um, titanium, titanium, where on the periodic table is that? All right, so if we take a look, oh, here it is right there, 1.54. So 1.54. Let's just look these up first. Uh, chloride. 3.16. Calcium. 1. And fluorine. Of course, that's 3.98, the largest one. So if we look at this one first, we know that uh, 3.98 subtract 1 gives us 2.98. And of course, on our scale, that's way bigger than 1.7. Ionic bond. Therefore, ionic compound. Now, if I look at the other one, uh, maybe let's just work over here. 316 minus 1.54. So we're going to get a 2 there. Carry that. 
Uh, six, 1.62. Oh, it's just under, just under here. So it's polar covalent. Polar covalent bond. Therefore, oops, and of course I'm running where you can't see. Therefore, covalent compound. So CAF2, CAF2 is ionic. Therefore, when naming that, it's just simply calcium fluoride. Okay. And uh, naming the other one, we know it's going to be covalent, so we have to use the tetra, mono di tri tetra. So T titanium and the CL, it's covalent. So we have to use the prefixes when naming it. Prefixes for uh, covalent bonds. Titanium tetra chloride. So that's what you have to do for this question. And there's going to be one of each. There's going to be an ionic one and there's going to be a molecular one. And uh, so you should be able to do that. Look these up on the table and you should be able to finish this assignment no problem. All right, we'll see you again.